You've heard James say it a million times. Respect the Polygon. At WeatherCall, we make the Polygon better. We call, text, or email you so you'll always know when you're in danger. No matter who you are, there's a WeatherCall solution right for you. Check us out at weathercallservices.com. This is the morning weather briefing. This is for Thursday, the 4th of April. I'm James Spann. Alabama's weather dry through the weekend. Still temperatures below average. And again, we'll be looking at the chance of frost across parts of the state. The uh, better chance of frost will likely come early Saturday morning. And rain will be coming back next week. So check this out. Here's the upper air look this morning. A deep vertically stacked low that's sitting over Ohio and Michigan. And that covers basically the entire eastern half of the country. Uh, interestingly enough, we have a big winter storm in progress on this 4th of April for parts of northern New England. All the shades of blue on that map. That is snow that is falling this morning. It's a cool morning. We've got a few spots actually in the 30s this morning. No frost because it's windy. We have 36 in Jasper, 39 for Sylacauga, 40 in Clanton. Birmingham at 46. Most spots are in the 40s. Even Mobile at 49. Dothan at 51. There is a red flag advisory in effect for much of the state today. The county's in hot pink on that map, and that's because of the combination of wind and low humidity. And that means there is a danger of uh, fires, wildfires today. So uh, we would recommend no outdoor burning because of that. Around the nation, winter storm warnings in effect up in New England for the snow that you saw. Out west, we have a number of wind issues there for parts of the southwest United States. We have a marginal risk of severe storms today, of all places, in parts of Idaho and Montana. And tomorrow, no severe storms expected across the country. Day three, which is Saturday, we have a marginal risk over parts of the midsection, Oklahoma, Kansas, in Nebraska. Let's jump out to Monday. And we have a risk of severe storms defined around the Arklatex region, parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. And on Tuesday, basically the same area with a chance of severe storms, mainly eastern Texas and north and western Louisiana. There is no risk defined for Alabama at this point beyond that. Here's a look at rain for the next seven days. The heavier totals will likely be over the western half of the state. This is rain through Thursday morning of next week. Rain amounts for the western side of the state between two and three inches, one to two inches for the eastern counties of the state. And next week is looking relatively wet, as you'll see. So here we go, model fans, the GFS. This is the 06Z run, valid today at 4. That uh, deep upper low moving through parts of the northeast United States, a new trough coming into California. And for Alabama today, the weather will be windy and cool, dry, partly sunny with highs in the 60s. Maybe a few showers up around Chattanooga uh, with the circulation coming around the upper low. And again, snow showers for places like Chicago and Detroit, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and the big snows up in the uh, eastern part of New England. So tomorrow, a sunny and cool day, uh, I still think we're going to see a little wind. So while many spots could be in the 30s tomorrow morning, if there is wind, that would tend to mitigate the chance of any big frost problems. The day will be sunny, and again, highs will be in the 60s. And I think the most widespread chance of frost will be Saturday morning. This is Saturday. Many spots will be in the 30s with frost possible. And some of the colder pockets could see a freeze. So again, growers, keep that in mind. That's early Saturday morning. The day Saturday will be sunny with highs in the upper 60s and low 70s. And we're dry Sunday. We go back in the 70s statewide. Showers off to the west. And Monday, eclipse day. Solar eclipse. For Alabama, it's a partial eclipse, and that just doesn't look good. Uh, the sky will be mostly cloudy with a chance of showers. The better chance of showers for the northern and western counties of the state. And I really think to, to get a good clear shot in that path of totality, which is north and west of the state, northern New York, northern New England, Maine, probably your best bet. 
So this is Tuesday. We are in a very moist air mass. Occasional showers are likely, maybe a rumble of thunder. Wednesday, a surface slow forms near New Orleans, and rain continues. And with that southerly track of the surface low, that means probably no chance of any severe weather, just a good rain event here. And a week from today, this is Thursday, April 11th. Long wave trough coming through, still a chance of lingering showers. That surface low is moved up toward Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. So again, pretty good chunk of next week looks wet. We'll probably be dry at the end of the week on Friday. Let's go out 10 days. This is Saturday, April 13th, a ridge in place here, and that weekend looks good. Dry and mild, highs in the 70s for the weekend of the 13th and 14th. Here's a look at rain for Birmingham coming off the European Ensemble. You're looking for the green line. That's the mean of the Ensemble members. And the mean is up there between 3 and 4 inches between now and the 19th of April. Here's a look at temperatures coming off the National Belinda Models. Highs in the 60s through Saturday. And again, this is for Birmingham. Understand in the city it's going to be warmer. We've got 40 now. Our numbers have come up a little bit, which is good. 40 for both uh, tomorrow morning and Saturday morning. But again, I think Saturday many places will be in the 30s with a chance of some frost. So keep that in mind. Then we go back in the 70s for Sunday and through all of next week. And the latest 8 to 14 day guidance. This is for April 11th through April 17th. Temperatures here may be a little above average. That would include much of the country. So we've got the survey results in from the National Weather Service from the uh, tornadoes that touched down. This was Tuesday night. Uh, this is an EF1 track identified in parts of Dallas and Chilton counties, extreme northern Dallas and extreme southern Chilton. Uh, this passed near Plantersville, crossed over Highway 22. Uh, the rating was EF1. It was down for a little over eight miles. And the same parent storm dropped another tornado uh, through parts of southern Chilton County. This came uh, down south of Fairview, down through Pools Crossroads, a community along uh, County Road 37. And this was an EF0. Uh, peak winds 85 miles an hour. This was down for 15 miles. It ultimately crossed over uh, Interstate 65 and US 31, just below the Peach Park exit near the Alabama State EMA facility there. Uh, but again, those are the survey results. And also there was a small tornado near Leeton up in Colbert County in uh, the northwestern part of the state. So on this date... April 4th, 1977, we have to always think back on this horrible F5 tornado that came through the Birmingham Metro, the northern and western part of the Birmingham Metro. Most people call this the Smithfield Estates tornado. That's where the damage was maximized. Uh, 22 people were killed in this. And again, this is not the 74 event. This was 1977. And uh, Dr. Theodore Fujita actually... Uh, studied this intensely, and Dr. Fujita considered rating this an, e, an F6, and of course the scale at the time didn't go to 6 and still doesn't today. Uh, all these photographs from uh, J.B. Elliott, my, uh, my colleague, my longtime friend. We miss J.B., goodness gracious. He uh, passed away several years ago, but J.B. worked at the National Weather Service at Birmingham at the time. But this got down near U.S. 78, cut across the old Daniel Payne College, came across I-65 near Smithfield Estates. So uh, on this date in 1977, and the same parent storm was responsible for the crash of Southern Airways Flight 242 in northern Georgia. Uh, the plane ingested hail into the engines. The windshield was totally shattered by hail, and they lost both engines. And uh, they couldn't find an airstrip, and they tried to land on this road and uh, crashed, obviously. And uh, sadly, uh, the pilots and 61 passengers died. But miraculously, 20 of the passengers survived, including both flight attendants. Uh, but very, very tragic day, uh, April 4th, 1977, the uh, Birmingham F-5 and that uh, aviation disaster, Southern Airways Flight 242, in uh, northeastern Georgia, in Paulding County. But a nice sunset last night. Very nice across Alabama. 
Sky was mostly fair. Had a few little showers up in the Tennessee Valley yesterday around that upper low, even some small hail in spots because the air loft was uh, so cold. All right. Uh, I should mention I had a great time uh, last night in Guin at uh, First Baptist Church for their 50th anniversary remembrance of the uh, 23 people that were killed there April 3rd, 1974, 50 years ago. Very, very good service. I was honored to be able to speak at that and really enjoyed that. Uh, today, I'm going to be up in Sardis City, up toward uh, Boaz for a senior adult event, and then Pleasant Grove Elementary School out in the western part of Birmingham, and they know tornadoes well in Pleasant Grove. They, have, they of course, were hit by a really big upper-end EF4, April 27, 2011. Tomorrow, Dolly Ridge Elementary School in Vestavia. And then I will be off to Mobile for CCAPS. That's a, a weather conference hosted by the Meteorology Program at the University of South Alabama. And I'll be speaking at that on uh, Saturday. But looking forward to that. See a lot of friends and colleagues there. And, of course, we invite you to watch us on TV this evening, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.